Oh, jam! Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Hearthstone Descent of Dragons set review. I am Chewy, as always, but this time I am joined by not one dork, but two. Hi, dorks. Hi. I'm... Well, who am I? I guess for this, I'm still Brian, right? Yeah, just because this is a different game, I'm not a different person. I'm Brian, and on the Man of Pool, I am known as the Lead Rambler, because I talk a lot, and Tangent Master of the Group. And I have done one of these set reviews with Chewy, and I'm, I have learned my lesson. I'm going to try and keep my comments more or less to the point, because we got a lot to go through. Although I'll probably still interrupt Mike. Oh, yeah. Uh, good one. <laughs> Um, <laughs> on Mike, on our podcast about magic, I'm the rules guy and the game lore guy, but I don't have such a distinct personality or archetype on um, content about Hearthstone. I'm just a dude playing Hearthstone. Now, it should be noted that in uh, the last couple of months, Mike has played infinitely more Hearthstone than Brian. Yes. And way more Hearthstone than me. So Yeah, which is weird. Because his his opinions will be much more important than mine. Yeah, because Evolve being in standard actually made me stop playing Hearthstone and I don't like Battlegrounds enough to play it at all really. So It's grown on me. I'm still not like best thing ever, but it's grown on me. When I don't hate it with a passion because it <laughs> RNG uh, okay, I mean, I like... so yes, the sense of dragons. We're gonna start. We're gonna do the classes in alphabetical order. Luckily, the first four classes are the League of Explorers classes. The next five are the Galakrond classes, and then we have neutral. So, actually, breaks down really well. It does for YouTube purposes. It breaks down beautifully. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, let's start with druid. Now, every class has some dragon stuff. Mm -hmm. and every class has one or two other things that they're pushing you to do. Yes. So keep keep that in mind. Now, I guess we'll just start with the first card and truck right on through. Probably. All right, so first off, we've got the award for the best name in the set. This is a, a, a term we've been using in Magic as a joke name forever. But it's real. It's embiggen. Yeah. <laughs> so, for zero mana, all the minions in your deck, not your hand, your deck, get plus two, plus two, and they cost one more, but they can't go above ten, because then you wouldn't be able to play it, and this card would be actually awful. Um, I, I think I like this card. Like, the cost-benefit analysis on this one is rough. Because for it, free, give everything left in your deck plus two plus two seems really good, but then they cost more, which is really yeah. bad. And I'm like, uh. I mean, but definitely. Is, go ahead. Yeah, Mike. but it is just one more. True. And two and two is is really fair stats for just costing one more. Very true. Yeah. I. This to me, despite the fact that it costs nothing. To me, this feels a little more like a late game card when you've already got a presence on the board that you know you're not going to die right away, and you're up there with ma with mana crystals, so you'll probably be able to play whatever you draw even for one more. Um, and plus two plus two is a significant increase. That in this game that feels pretty darn big. So, yeah, I disagree with it being a late game card. In the late game, that's when it's going to have the least impact. Because you're not going to draw many more cards that have then been pumped. That yeah, is a good point. that means you're That's... not going to get as much out yeah. of it. I, I do think that you probably want to have... Brian is right that you probably want to have stuff on the board already when you play this. Just because now everything in your deck costs one more. So it's going to be harder to get things on the board. But... Yeah, so you won't have to wait around a long time. Yeah. But I mean, if you draw it on turn one... That's that's it a could, like it could be right. Mm -hmm. That that's a that's a real question of like hmm. I wonder if you do like a tempo deck with this where 
your your curve stops a little earlier than it might otherwise. So one more doesn't hurt that much. Yeah, it, it gives an interesting. It gives you an interesting deck. It's a it's a little you know weeny swarm deck that is not a token deck because the tokens aren't going to get any benefit from this. Right. They're just going to make the token creator bigger and slightly I'll, more expensive. Now there is a uh, there's a druid car a druid minion that uh, is a choose one and one of the choose options is to make a copy of this minion and if the original is getting pumped the copy will get pumped as well correct so correct. you do have some options like that so it's like hand pump but it's deck pump nice but i do think this is not like a, you this is not like a, oh this just makes every deck better this is definitely some decision time so mm. You know, if I'm getting a copy, I'm just going to slam it in and be like, woo, who cares about cost? This is why I'm not good. <laughs> <laughs> so on that note, uh, next card we've got, um, I was, I had these in a different order. Did you sort them by mana cost? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, so I was like, I was like, Embiggen is not alphabetically the first one, but it is at the, zero. Uh, so. There's a sort button. Yeah. Right here. It's sort, a sort by. Sort by mana low to high. So... When I push that, that one for me has the next one being secure the deck. Is that right? Oh, I see. Okay, secure the deck. It's a side quest card, so it costs one mana. It is a what is that? That's a not a rare. It's a epic. 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 This is an epic card, man. Side quest. Go ahead and you attack twice with your hero, and then your reward once you've done that is you add three claw spells to your hand. That's not call like a crow, but claw. And just so we're all on the same page. <laughs> no, no, that's I'll two. I'll get calls. you next time, gadget. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Claw, um, Claw is a one mana druid spell. Your hero gets plus two attack in pl this turn and plus two armor. Right. Yeah, it's a uh, so right. it's a basic or classic card. I forget which, but yeah. One if you play this game at all, you've got two copies of Claw. I didn't realize that it was the the card claw. I'm looking at this. I'm like, where's the little picture that shows me what this card does? <laughs> Hello? Mm. So I, a side I, quest, it, it's like you, the legendary quest, except it doesn't start in your hand automatically. It's just a card in your deck. And that's why the requirements are much smaller and the rewards are much smaller than one of the legendary quests. Yeah. Uh, attack twice with your hero isn't really... A big ask, and uh, getting three claws is not really a big deal. So it's not terrible, but yeah, like I don't particularly like this one, like at mm -hmm. all. But I guess if like, you're playing something, like here's the problem: if you're playing like something aggressive, you don't want to use your mana on hero powering. And if you're playing something like a quest druid, then you're not going to be able to attack with your hero once mm -hmm. you finish your quest. And if you're playing like a the dragon druid, where does this even fit? So <laughs> I don't know. I mean, if you're playing, if you are playing something controlly, then you will be attacking. I think a little more often than if you were just being offensive. So having getting three claws, if you want to be controlling, sounds nice. Have you ever played two claws in one turn as a removal spell? Because I have. Oh, yeah. So this could be a way to be, you know, you, and you can spread them out, use them all at once, whatever. So I can see this. I agree with you. This one's it's not, the Druid's version of Fireball. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. So I... It costs one less. Chewy. What? This one isn't super exciting, but it also has zero, almost zero commitment with it. The only time you're basically not attacking is if they've got like an 8-8 eight, eight with taunt and you're like, hmm, no. But otherwise it's pretty pretty painless. So yeah, yeah it's 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 fine. It's, it's fine. fine, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next up, the, this is a side quest that actually like uh strengthen numbers. So this one, your quest is spend 10 mana on minions. And your reward is summon a minion from your deck. Yeah. Hey, Magnor with the 16-month resub. Thanks, buddy. He says, Dagrons, oh. you damn right. 
So it's funny that this one. That. Work. It's fu- it's it's funny uh, for me that uh, uh, secure the deck is epic and this is uncommon um, because common. this common. I thought okay, yeah. I don't know all the terms, obviously, but <laughs> um, this one uh, and you know I'm sure there's a reason for that and I'm just bad at analyzing cards. That's why I'm here. But uh, this to me is just a little more exciting. It's a little more payoff. And it should be noted, of course, in case it wasn't obvious, that 10 mana on minions is not necessarily on one turn. Yeah, In just fact, so you can't do it in one turn the turn you play it. No, no, no. But you don't have to turn around next turn and be like 10 drop. You can use so. Innervate. Shut up, Mike. Uh- okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is bang. a card that's way more tempo-oriented than value because for one mana... Because playing minions is something you're going to do anyway, unless you're a yeah. Malagos druid, and in which case, why are you playing this card? So <laughs> you're going to be doing that anyway. So essentially, you pay one mana, and later you get a random minion from your deck. And since this reward happens when you spend the tenth mana on minions, that means you're getting a free something with the last thing you played. Right. Which is super tempo. Tempo, tempo, tempo. Yep. But you lose all uh, any, like, battle cries or whatever from that. So, like, if yeah. you pull your, uh... Oh, crap. The choose one guy that's two five fives with Rush. Yeah. Yeah, the face guy, yeah. What? I don't know what he's called. The face guy. The face guy, yeah, him. But uh, then you're losing the the value of getting two of them or giving it the the pump. You also get around the 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 drawback of battle cry deal X damage to this minion or something like that. So depends yeah, on how you build. It's, it's hard to it's hard to really take advantage of that because it's random from your deck. So correct, and yeah. and so because you're having to spend. Because you're having to spend mana on minions to fulfill this, it's not going to be like this is a deck where you've got one or two minions. So to make sure you get the right one. Exactly. If I got a good point. Yeah. Death rattle, always good. I just like this as just extra tempo. You spend one mana now and you get a free dude later. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That seems awesome. Seems good to me. Especially if you've used him biggin. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> it helps with both sides, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> Gosh. All right. So this is one of the other things that Druid is trying to do is the, the treant thing. Now, this was already a thing in previous sets, and now they're giving it more toys to play with. I feel like we started seeing some of it back in, like, Witchwood when you had, like, the get th- add three treants to your hand, that sort of stuff. So, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. So we have tree enforcements. <laughs> so nice. one mana choose one give a minion plus two health and taunt or summon a two two tree so it's a one mana two two which is good there's yeah. actually a neutral one mana two two in this set which floors me <laughs> spoilers uh or it's one mana the the lackey the titanic lackey without the lackey mm-hmm so, yeah, if you're doing the treant thing, which it looks pretty good, you're probably playing this, because why not? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I don't think this warrants going in like Quest Druid, because giving something plus two health and taunt and getting a 2-2 doesn't really seem like it goes in that deck. <laughs> yeah, unless you really I mean... want something else to do on turn two. I also see it as being an emergency. Oh God, I'm about to die. Okay, never, maybe not quite yet. That is what taunt's good for, after all. Very true. So yeah, nice little solid rare. Yeah, it's fine. All right, now every class has a breath. <sighs> I'm sorry, I should have brushed my teeth before I came. You, you really <laughs> should have. Uh, <laughs> and Druids is Breath of Dreams, which is for two mana, draw a card. That's already good. If you're holding a dragon, gain an empty mana crystal. 
It, it's a if you're whole if you're playing dragons, it's a wild gro- it's an old wild growth and an excess mana at the same time. Yeah. I I really like this one. Yeah, this card is insane when it works, which again is in the dragon thing. Now there are yeah. a bazillion dragons in the set, including like three neutrals that just make the dragon decks just go. Mm-hmm. So they're all do like doable as far as having enough dragons to make the deck go. Mm-hmm. It's not entirely clear if they're all doable uh, as far as playability, but mm-hmm. th- like this card right here is one of the good things about the Dragon Druid, straight up, because that's just silly. Chat asks, how long before this costs three? Right? <laughs> yeah. I don't uh, know if it will because you have to be playing dragons and unless that deck becomes absolutely insane which i i'm i don't i'm not sold on that uh i guess we'll see <laughs> well but this is clearly one of the best cards in that deck straight up yeah being able to get extra mana without truly spending a card uh it's big yeah pretty compelling so we'll yep see. All right, next up, the Shrubadeer. Oh, God. Is that how you pronounce it? I've been staring at it, and I'm like, wait for someone else to say it first, Brian. <laughs> the Shrubadier. <laughs> is it French? The the Shrubadier is a 2-mana 1-1 one, one battle cry, summon a 2-2 two, two trinket. So it's a 1-1 one, one and a 2-2 two, two for 2-mana. Two it's fine, but the 2-2 two, is a trinket. That's important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's uh, fine. I, I, I like it. It's going to stink when you get this off of, like, get a random 2-2, two, two, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. Again, if you're trying to do the trade thing, you're probably playing this. Probably. Yes. Yeah, might as well. Speaking, Speaking of, of the trade thing, here's the reason that this card, that, that archetype is probably going to be good. Aeroponics. Huh. I just got the name. <laughs> yeah, aeroponics is a spell that costs five. Draw two cards, and it costs two less for each tree you control. And there's no limit on that, right? That can go all the way down to zero? Right, yeah. yeah. And even if you just have one tree, that means it's an arcane knowledge, which is good stuff. You know, that's your standard for which you really want to gauge other draw spells off of. Yeah. So, like, turn... And, and this isn't even Magical Christmas Land. Turn one... Uh, where'd it go? Tree enforcements, turn two shrub a deer, turn three one mana aeroponics. Yeah, easy. like that's actually a thing that could happen. Or just turn two shrub a deer, turn three aeroponics. Like, what? Craziness. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think if this deck becomes a thing, it's going to be because of aeroponics. Straight up. Yeah, easily. So now we have our first, right? Our first actual dragon in Descent of Dragons? First dragon, yep. Yes. Six mana, four, eight, taunt, battle cry, discover a dragon. They all, all the, uh, all the classes have an explorer? Yeah. I think so, yeah. And they all have battle cry, discover a dragon, and just the stats or, and the cost and everything else is different. It might be at least the, um, it might be the, the uh, League of Explorers classes. I can't remember. But anyway. I think we'll you're right. That. Yeah, I think it's just the, the League of Explorers classes and the others get the... The evil ones get the Galakron stuff. Yeah. So so six mana for a 4-8 with Taunt? Draw a card? Yeah. Draw, um, draw a card. I, I Ever since they came out with Discover, just as a mechanic, I've been on board with it. And this, stap- this stapled on here, love it. And the fact that it, again, keeps a dragon in your hand for the breath cards, for any of the cares about dragon stuff, seems great. So it's not really a decision, do I need to hold this in my hand or not? You just, no, you just do. You, you don't, you don't, you play it. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. The stat line is pretty good. The eight ass is, is just brutal at six mana. Yeah. Plus getting another dra- Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's fine. Short of poisonous, it's going to take them a long time to get through that. In the meantime, you're continuing to develop your curve and get some dragon. 
Nice. All right, next up, our first legendary Goru the Maitri. The Maitri. Uh, Maitri he? Maitri? Oh, and the flavor text is the word. He's untreefeated. Oh, come on. Boo! So he's... <laughs> Uh, he's a 7 mana, 5 10 with taunt. And the battle cry is for the rest of the game, your treants have plus 1 and plus 1. So this is all your treants all the time. No matter where they yeah. come from, are now 3-3s. Three well, and it's even better than, like, for the rest of the game, there are 3-3s. Three it's if you find a way to, like,. Return him to your hand or anything like that, or get another copy of him, shuffle him back in. They then get an additional plus one, plus one when you replay him. So, I heard you like some trance. So, I mean, sure. If you're, if you're doing the magical Christmas land thing, sure. Yeah. Yeah, why not? Why not? <laughs> but just I mean, it, at face I value, mean, he's pretty good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to say he has, you know, he's very good. Mm -hmm. like he's, he's plus one plus one won't make your trance amazing but it'll do a lot to make them just a little more relevant later in the game after you've yeah. played Goru yeah. and yeah. since and a lot of them go ahead I was going to say if you're playing a the treant deck you're probably an aggressive flood the board and kill you in the face kind of deck then this giving them all a permanent plus one plus one is just like oh come on for your opponent yeah, yeah. And I was just going to say that because a lot of trains can come just as bonuses to something else, they're not a heavy mana investment. So giving them that incremental effect at very little cost to you seems pretty good. Yeah, Force of Nature becomes a good card again after you play Goru. Yeah. It took a while. <laughs> and this is, I, I, keep in mind, I started playing Hearthstone literally like day two. So I have seen my fair share of Force of Nature and screw that card being good so <laughs> i had to deal with that for too long and then finally our, oh, our legendary dragon yes i love this girl i'm gonna talk talk about this girl is that all right okay all right ysera unleashed for nine mana just like the original ysera is a 412 I'm pretty sure those were her stats at the, uh, in the basic set as well yep mm -hmm. uh she's a dragon of course and her battle cry is pretty awesome if you love random stuff, you shuffle seven dream portals into your deck. When drawn, you summon a random dragon. It doesn't go to your hand. You summon it. Could be a like, you know, a, a three, two dragon fairy. Could be like a, maybe a five, five. Could be a death wing, you know, a dragon. So I, I love Ysera, the, the original one. I love the fact that you get val free value every turn. And 12, 12 toughness uh, uh, or endurance or whatever they call it in this game, blood drops. Twelve blood drops is pretty good, but I just I love I love the the value that she provides. And this this seems pretty awesome too. You have a little less control over when you you draw the portals unless you're almost empty, but then you get the effect for free whenever you draw it. And of course, like with all the other portals or things, scrolls, things that get shuffled into your deck, it should be that when you draw the dream portal, you still draw a normal card for the turn. And that may mean that you get multiple dream portal activations if you're lucky. So to me, too long, don't read, don't listen, whatever. Pretty awesome. What do you guys think? Oh, yeah. Stuff yes. like this is always really exciting. I love it. Yeah, she's fun. Yeah. I have no idea if she's any good, but she's fun. And that's why I liked. Yeah. Getting bonus creatures is always good. Yeah. Minions, rather. Bonus minions. Health. That's what they're called. That's what it's called. I've been racking my brain. You said <laughs> uh, toughness or endurance or whatever it's called. And I'm like, yeah, it's called... And I drew a complete blank. <laughs> <laughs> Blood drops. Blood drops, Yeah. <laughs> All right, okay. so that's Druid. Uh, that Druid, Druid, on the whole, it's really only got the two things going for it. It's got Treants and it's got Dragons. Yeah, it's got a lot more Treant stuff than Dragons, but it can pull on a lot more neutral Dragons. Yeah, there's a lot more neutral Dragon stuff uh, than there is neutral Treant stuff. So Yeah. Uh, I, I, I think Dra uh, Druid is probably fine. Yeah. yeah. I don't really know... 
Like, what are you? What is Quest Druid getting here? Like, does Quest Druid care about Embiggen? That's, uh, that's the leave, leave mana at the end of your turn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like then it what's doesn't the really get for anything that? for choose one effects because there's only one, and it's not. It's probably not worth. Um, I'm thinking Embiggen and Breath of Dreams if you want to put some dragons in there, but I don't know if putting dragons in there will dilute the other stuff you want to do with the quest. It yeah. probably will. Might not be worth messing with. Pro- yeah, I think you're right. I think it'll. That's not worth. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just it's 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 weird. Because that deck is already pretty solid. Like I didn't know what to do with it. Like how to make room for Coon the Forgotten King when it was when it came back, and then it once it was uh, now that it's gone again, I just put a second uh, worthy choice or whatever the one mana discover a choose one card. Mm-hmm. And that deck is finished again. And I'm like, well, all right. <laughs> all good here. Nothing to see. Move along. Yeah. All right. Okay. So that's Druid. That's Druid. Now we have Hunter. Hunter seems kind of nuts. This, I was looking through this. I'm like, seems pretty solid. It's probably got one of my favorite of the uh, Discover, dra- uh, Discover a Dragon cards when we get to it. Yeah. But um, yeah. All right, so first up, clear the way. This is a side quest. This this thing is insane. Summon three rush minions is the quest. Your reward... I want to do that anyway. Right? Your reward is a 4-4 griffin with rush. For one mana. Like, yeah. one mana up front for clear the way. Like, summon three rush minions. You've got Unleash the Beast, which gets you two right there. Yeah. Uh... The Lynx. The, the, thank you. The Lynx gets you two. Is that the Lynx in the description, or is that something else? Oh, no. The, the one mana, one one, that gives you another one mana, one yes. one. Yes. Yes, that's right. And don't you, you have the Hounds, the... the no, the those hound. have charge. Echo mm-hmm. okay. Wait, which one? No, no, he's talking about the Echo Hound. The Echo Hound. Oh, right. Okay. Those have Rush. I forget yeah. that's a card, because I don't ever play it. Uh... <laughs> well, but right there, because it's got Echo... You know, you get and, at least one or two right there. And for also, no if you're playing that weird quest hunter, the the locust, uh, the swarm of locusts, or whatever it's called. That's right. Oh yeah. I don't actually know how that no, works. No, not the swarm, the weapon. Oh, there, there's the weapon too. That's the. I knew I was forgetting something obvious. Mm-hmm. So in other words, what I'm saying is, clear the way is really easy to finish. The desert spear. Thank you. And the reward is nice. The reward is so good. A free 4-4 four, four with Rush, that's a free, like, Shadow Bolt mm. that can maybe attack again or do some more damage or eat a removal spell or something. Like, this is crazy. Also, for some reason, he didn't say it. Brian will be right back. So, yeah, I really like Clear the Way. Clear the Way is is uh, sweet. Yeah. Yeah. All right, next up, we've got Dwarven Sharpshooter. One mana, one three. Your hero power can target minions. Now, the last time we saw this in Standard, it was a two mana... Was he a two three? Yeah, two mana, two three at rare. At rare, was yeah. Was it epic? I think it might have been an epic. I can't remember, but... Yeah, Steam Weedle Sniper. Why do I remember that? I have no idea why you remember that. I'm impressed, though. <laughs> I can't even remember what cards are in my deck. <laughs> <laughs> but I love this guy. Because you play it on turn one, and now you've got the threat of, well, I'll just shoot your dude on turn oh, yeah. two. Mm. Where it, I always hated the, the the sniper because, well, you play it on turn two, and then turn three, you're threatening to shoot something and have one mana left. And it just didn't, it felt clunky. Mm-hmm. Like, and on turn four, okay, well, I'll play a 2-3 and shoot one of their guys. That's, yay. But on turn one, this is brilliant. Because they either kill it, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a 1-3 on turn one, which is just historically good. Yeah, yes. I really like this card. I actually think this, 
this helps out Hunter a lot on the first couple turns when before, like, what could you do? Play a Lynx or a a Mech? Yeah. And then go, eh. It also gives your hero power some relevance, because if, like, you get one of those bad draws and you don't have anything to do on turn two, you shoot him in the face and attack and say go. That mm-hmm. never feels good. But now you can attack and shoot one of their dudes and say go. That feels way better. Yeah, and it's decent enough to draw later in the game. You can use your hero power to destabilize your opponent's board a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I like this guy. Mm-hmm. All right, next up, Toxic Reinforcements, which is <laughs> such a great idea for a card. Another side quest, uh, use your hero power three times, and your reward is three leper gnomes. <laughs> which is, interestingly enough, you know, compared to the druid, um, epic side quest, kind of like getting a fireball. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Uh, so use your hero power get a fireball like the only thing I don't like about this is that it takes three turns Mm -hmm. of using your hero power which means you're not doing other things as much as you might want yeah but then If you're an aggro deck that's run out of stuff to play, then hey. Yeah, then you're going to be doing that anyway. But if you're an aggro deck that's run out of stuff to play, you have way bigger problems. <laughs> <laughs> but at least you're going to get a fireball in a few turns. If you survive, yes. <laughs> and I think, yeah, that, and I think that sums sometimes. up my problem with it, is that it's only really good in a deck that doesn't want to do this. Because, you know... I mean, three leper gnomes is it's it's all about face damage. Yeah. But if you're all about face damage on turn one, you don't want to play a toxic reinforcements. And right, when are you actually going to get around to charging it up? Yeah. Like so, when are you going to cast it, and then when are you going to actually use your hero power three turn? Now, if you play it on just an off mana turn, and then eventually you get the three things as like a bonus like well okay i've got three leper gnomes now yay Mm -hmm. i i guess that's fine but it just feels like you'd rather have a tighter aggro deck yeah plus i don't think a death rattle (laughs) hunter really cares about leper gnomes (laughs) oh i guess does it put this in a better context when we look at the fact that hunter has other yay hero power stuff being given to it in the set uh possibly oh yeah it's got the the stalker Mm -hmm. and the legendary and and the legendary huh okay that that could be i still don't know if that's (laughs) yeah i don't know i don't know like this is just a weird card and a lot of these epics are like that. They're just a little odd. And that's been a a Hearthstone thing for a while now, so... That's true. That's true. Weird epics. Yeah. So, I don't know. I guess we'll see if Brian cares when he gets back. Uh, Now, Corrosive Breath is is really good. This is uh, two mana. Deal three damage to a minion. If you're holding a dragon, it also hits the enemy hero. What was that card? It was some kind of shot. Cobra, Cobra, Snake, shot. Cobra shot. Yeah. Yeah, that, cost that cost five? Five, yeah. So this is a three mana discount on Cobra shot. I would play that in a hot second. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because I mean, two mana deal three to a minion is fine. Oh, yeah. And so the the face damage is just bonus. So yeah, I like this. I think this is, if there are dragons in your hunter deck, this is just a staple. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so now we've got another hero power called the Phase Stalker. A two mana, two, three beast. Good stat line. After you use your hero power, cast a secret from your deck. Huh. 
I mean, the Highlander Hunter decks right now are playing uh, uh, a Secrets Package already. Mm-hmm. And they're playing the dude, if you've got a, the, the Mass Contender, if you've got a Secret, play a Secret from your deck. Mm-hmm. So this seems like it slots right into those. Because essentially what you're getting, since hero, I mean, uh, uh, Hunter Secrets cost two, you're getting a free hero power use. Right. Pretty much. Because on turn two, playing a 2-3 and a secret is not great, but it's fine. Turn four, I mean. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I said, but it doesn't matter. (laughs) I don't know. It seems all right. It seems fine. Yeah, I like it. It's good value. It's good value. There we go. I like it. All right, then we've got... I, okay, this is another one of those nutso cards. The Diving Griffin, which is a three-mana 4-1 with Rush. Mm-hmm. It's a beast. That might be important. And its battle cry is draw a Rush minion from your deck. Mm. What? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sold. Yeah, we know just from Town Crier being a card forever, ever since it was released, that this is a good effect. Granted, you you won't have the crazy mummy to get with this, but true. there's still some very great stuff to get. Yeah, I mean, Zilliax is still a thing. Mm-hmm. So Zilliax is still a, a thing. Do up. The Echo Hound Yeah, is still a thing. But, like, this is... It's a Shadow Bolt that says draw a card. Mm-hmm. It's a Shadow Bolt that says draw another removal guy. What? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm all in. I love it. I love it. I love it. Also, I just remembered... Clear the Way says summon three Rush Minions. We literally only talked about Rush Tokens. We didn't talk about normal Rush Creatures. Yeah. Which counts, right? When it says summon, that means play or yeah, summon. summon. Yeah, summon means play or summon, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, wow, yeah, clear the way is even better. I guess we did talk about the links, which... We did. Yeah, okay, never mind. We just didn't talk about anything bigger than that, like Zilliax or Diving Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Primordial Explorer is the... Uh, Explorer that Brian liked. Three mana, two, three dragon with poisonous. Discover a dragon. I don't really know if I would call it my favorite. Well, it's a... It's a snake and you get to discover a dragon. It's awesome. Yeah. Sure. I mean, it's good. It's just not like... Awesome. (laughs) Okay, it's not capital A awesome. Yeah. But, you know, still, it's a poisonous thing that draws a card. I like it. Yeah. Removal that draws you cards is always good. (laughs) See, also, Diving Griffin. (laughs) (laughs) What? All right. Then we have Stormhammer. Man. (laughs) One, I was amazed that Stormhammer, from a flavor perspective, is a... A hunter card. Oh, hey, Brian's back. Hey, hey Brian. Uh, I'm totally going to not be chewing while I'm talking. Okay, but good. Try to hit the mute button when, when you're chewing. I, I um, will try. I will try. But you're amazed that Storm Hunter, Storm Hammer is a hunter card. Okay, well, do you have anything to add about any of the previous hunter cards? Real quick, Corrosive Breath seems pretty good. Um, and I love the Phase Stalker as a... I have a, a secret hunter deck that I just adore. And then Primordial Explorer seems nuts. Poisonous is a very, very, very good mechanic. The stats on this don't even almost matter, except that it has more than one toughness, so that a, 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 a mage has to actually use something to get rid of it. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm not, but... Three... Have you been playing a lot of Battlegrounds? Because Poisonous is kind of broken in Battlegrounds, but in normal... 
I may have been playing a little bit of backgrounds late <laughs> battlegrounds lately, yes, but I still like it because it it answers so many problems. And the fact that it replaces itself, it's essentially a minion remove a, a removal spell in the form of a minion that replaces itself. You can even discover another primordial explorer. You what? can. <laughs> you can. So, anyway, seems pretty good. Oh, and I think I'm going to hate Toxic Reinforcements, like, a lot. Like, playing against it, I'm going to be like... <sighs> but, yeah. And didn't Dwarven Sharpshooter, didn't that effect used to be on, like, a rare card? It, it was an epic 2-3 two, for 2. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Seems pretty good, because you can do this and then hero power on turn 2. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Stormhammer feels like, like a rogue card, but in Hunter? Well, see, just from a flavor perspective, I thought Stormhammer would be either a warrior or a shaman card because of who's had it. But I also am oh, not a real Dirk. big WoW lore guy. That would be Dirk. But Dirk doesn't play Hearthstone, <coughs> so Dirk's not here. I'm sure if Dirk was here, he'd be able to set us straight. Ugh, Coke trying to kill me. Coke, what have I done to you? So yeah, it's a three mana, three two weapon that doesn't lose durability while you control a dragon. So every time you've got a dragon on the board and you attack with it, it stays a three, whatever it already is. Mm -hmm. Which, with the Primordial Explorer and all the neutral dragons and whatnot, it's real easy to have a dragon on the board and punch something with a storm hammer. So I love like you, a three five or three six. I love that you can get this off of the three mana hunter spell that gets you a weapon and a secret and a minion. Don't remind me of that spell. And oh what, my god! And what if the minion you discover is a dragon? <laughs> oh well, not discover. I should uh, that that has a meaning, but that you get off of it is a dragon. That just feels awesome. Huh? Comedy. Yeah, without dragons, it's just a good normal like it's it's a fiery win X, right? Yes. Or an eagle horn bow without secrets. Like it's a three mana three two weapon, which is perfectly standard. But mm -hmm. as soon as you get dragons, this thing gets out of control. Oh, and the minion has to be a beast. Yeah, that's right. The hunter specs uh, finds you a hunter beast. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. I was muted because of pretzel of breadstick, but yeah, still like it though. Oh yeah. So all right, moving on. Dragon Bane, a four mana three five mech, which is it's just a ballista that has a mask on. <laughs> and it says after you use your hero power, deal five damage to a random enemy. It's a reusable dart trap. Yeah, when I saw this card, I was like, yeah, that's pretty much what I did when I saw this card, because my head just went a little like, uh, and like four mana three five is fine. It's got the mech tag, which helps. Mm -hmm. And like on turn six, it's at, that's a good turn, right? Play a, oh, yeah. play a three five. And then shoot your opponent in the face and shoot something for five. Like, it says random enemy, not enemy minion. So you could pick off a minion. You could hit him in the face. I mean... And, and if they don't, if they have an empty board, you deal them seven. Yeah. Like, I... You seems it seems good. A, <laughs> it does a really nice Ragnaros impression. It does. Yeah. Oh god, it is just over half a Ragnaros whenever you use your hero power. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> That's right. what I'm here for, folks. And then we have the legendary dragon, Varanus. I took the last one, so... A 6 mana 7-6 seven, six dragon, battle cry, all enemy minions get a hunter's mark. Which is... I, I guess. Like, you really need something else. Because just changing their their toughness to one doesn't do anything. Well, it helps you break through a wall. That is true. It does get through big taunts and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just... 
this one doesn't excite me that much. And I wonder if I just need to remember the fact that it's a seven six for five for seven six for six with a with an upside. But Yeah, um, it's a great big creature. It's a great big minion for six with a useful ability. Yeah. Maybe you yeah. play Cave Hydra in your deck with Varanus. <laughs> Maybe you do. That's that's pretty nice. It's like, all right, well, all your stuff has one toughness, and I'll kill three of them. <laughs> huh, I don't know. I would say, well, you could have an explosive trap up, but they can then just trade into your 7-6, because they know it's an explosive trap, because let's be real. <laughs> it's an explosive trap. So I don't know. I'm sure that there's there's something that I'm missing here, but... Like Brian, it doesn't excite me a super lot. Yeah, I mean, not every legendary has to end the game. No, it doesn't. But and it also costs three less than, um, is it Ysera? Yeah. But uh, coming right after Ysera, I'm like, yeah, okay. It's not bad. I'm just not like amazed. Amazed. Oh, plus it's a pretty blue color. Look at her. It is. She's cute. All right, moving on. So that's Hunter. Mm -hmm. So now let's go to Mage. Mage has a lot of stuff going on. It I does. guess we should probably like... Did you want to recap Hunter real quick? Like say, yeah, I think we should probably wrap up Hunter before we move on to Mage. Hang on, okay. let's back that up. So what's it got going on? Seems, I mean, Hunter since the beginning of the game was like the aggro class. And it feels like they're kind of getting back to their roots a little bit, especially with some of the stuff. It just seems very aggressively costed. I mean, yeah. the biggest one is, what, six mana? So, Yeah, I did notice that the, the curve on these Hunter cards is stops at six, and there's three mm. ones. Of course, two of those are side quests, so maybe that doesn't count. But <laughs> but you've got the, the rush thing with Clear the Way and Diving Griffin, which are both excellent cards. You've got the Hero Power thing with the Sharpshooter and the whatever reinforcements and the uh face stalker and the dragon bane and then you've got the dragon thing which honestly i think the storm hammer makes the dragon thing worth it in this class mm -hmm. corrosive be breath i don't think that by itself really m makes a difference either way but the storm hammer is totally it's, worth it's it's what you put in into the into the dragon deck and it's fine there you know yeah so, all in all, I think Hunter got some good stuff and toxic reinforcements. <laughs> I wasn't there for that. You didn't like toxic reinforcements? It, it doesn't seem worth it. Okay. I just have a feeling it's going gonna, it's gonna to tick me off. Yeah. We just couldn't figure out what deck it wants to go in. Yeah. Good point. It's all right. Now let's go to Mage. Mage has always been one of my favorite classes. Because it just does neat stuff. So Mage has dragon stuff. It has mana cyclone deck stuff. Mm -hmm. It has elementals. And it's got elemental stuff that sort of goes into that mana cyclone deck. Sort of. And it's got some dragon stuff. Yeah. All right. So let's get to it. Arcane Breath. One mana, deal two damage to a minion. If you have a dragon, discover a spell. Love it. Yeah. I mean, it's been, uh, two, minutes by, two mana by itself, eh. But, you know, hey, it's better than one. But then also draw a card that's a dragon. I like it. What? No, the, the card discover that draws a spell. spell. Oh, discover a spell. I'm sorry. Draw a card that's a spell... Sorry, the word dragon's getting tossed around a lot here. I'm I'm getting confused. <laughs> ah, still love it, especially when you have mage has so many amazing spells. Get the one you need. Boom, done. Next, <laughs> yeah. like another arcane breath. Also, it's it gives you the uh, another spell that didn't start in your deck for another card that'll pop up later uh, to go with the mana cyclone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
All right, then we've got Elemental Allies. This side quest is weird. You play an Elemental two turns in a row. Not play two Elementals, but play an Elemental two turns in a row. And your reward is draw three spells from your deck. Like, what? Wow. <laughs> so that's nuts, right? Oh, yeah. That is, that is, yeah. That is insane. I'm glad I'm not the only person who thinks that. Because this is one of these where you can load up a deck where you're drawing the same thing as a reward every single time. Because it's, you complete the quest by playing minions, and the reward is spells from your deck. So you're not stepping over your own toes to do something if you want to do a dirty trick with this. Yeah. And you can get that... Uh... Like, you can go off with spells and play a Mana Cyclone. And then next turn, just play some other elemental. Mm -hmm. And completely refill your hand. Like, there are so many ways to use this. <laughs> yeah. I am, I, I, wow. Like, this seems good. So next, learn Draconic. So for one mana, another side quest, this is a common one. Spend eight mana on spells, and your reward is a 6-6! Six, six! Dragon! <laughs> so unlike to spend ten mana and you get a random minion, which might be something great or something small, this is, you will absolutely get a 6-6 six, six dragon. And you're spending eight mana on spells, which you want to be doing. Like a lot. Right? I don't think there's any question that this is pretty good. I don't know power or anything like that. This feels like a good card. The bigger question in everyone's mind is, is it in anyone's best interest that Reno is learning to speak Draconic? I mean, if yes. you read the flavor text, it says, upon pay taking up the spell book, Re Reno realized with a start, I can't read. <laughs> so, I hadn't I, seen that. I think we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, the oh. Draconic Emissary that comes with it is 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 very pretty, and it's very terrifying. Because a one mana six six dragon, yeah, I'll do that. I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs> okay, next up, Violet Spellwing. A one mana one one elemental with a death rattle. Add an arcane missile spell to your hand. So it's another it's spell that didn't start in your deck. It's another elemental. It's a one mana element. Sold. Yeah, it's a yeah. floor wax as a dessert topping. Uh, it's just a it's a good they, turn one thing to just drop too. That, that, that gives you a spell that costs one mana to help chain into other things. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, with this and Array of Frost, you can totally activate this next card. Easy. Mm-hmm. So, Chenvala. Chenvala. That's a... Huh. Is a 3-mana 2-5 elemental. After you cast 3 spells in a turn, summon a 5-5 five, five elemental. Okay. Reminds me of the... Um, the priest weapon, which is a weird phrase to say. Uh, the When you <laughs> cast 3 spells, you get a 6-6 six, six dragon. Yeah. Yeah. But I think I... This, is, this can actually attack. I think that so, one made five fives too. Hmm. Okay. But like, I'm just misremembering, so. But especially in Mage, three spells is nothing. Because like I said, Ray of Frost is two spells, and then anything else. And you get a five five. Yeah. All right. Look at the flavor text. Okay, like the dragon soul if dragons had souls of ice. No, okay, yeah. Like Brian said, it's like the dragon's hole. <laughs> That's pretty funny. But yeah, I think that the uh, the spell wing and the elemental allies and Shenvala just just flow so well together. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to build this deck. <laughs> uh. The Azure Explorer is honestly as much as I love Mage, it's probably one of my least favorite of the explorers. Explorer yeah. cards. Poor guy. It's cute. 
Oh yeah, my my note for this was duh, and that's all I wrote. Yeah. Because look at him, he's cute, but it's it's okay. Spell damage plus two is no joke if this survives. True. Yes, but it's a two three that's got to survive. Play it on turn four or later. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying of all of them, it's not my my most favorite. It's not exactly a condemnation. Exactly. But it is adorable. And as Mike said, the decks that want spell damage uh, or dragon, I don't know if this is worth playing in a dragon deck. It does have the dragon tag, but it doesn't come down early enough to only be a 2-3. So this well, might the, uh, be one that you play in the, with the discover. The the upside is because the arcane breath spell in this, I almost said color in this class is so cheap, it's fine to you know turn one arcane breath, turn two arcane breath again, or something else cares about a dragon. Since this is a little more expensive than some of the others, I guess. It's yeah, I just, fine. I just don't know. We'd have to. I have to like get yeah. the set and and try to build it and play with it to know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, whether or not the explorer is is worth the four mana. Now, yes. in, like I said, in the decks that want the spell damage, they're totally gonna play it. Or yeah, as yeah. Chad just said, you can you can hold it until you need it, and then for four mana, and then like double ray of frost and arcane missiles and all that. I mean, heck, on turn five, you play this, you're automatically going to discover dragons. So you're still holding it, so then you can arcane breath for four instead of two, and you still discover a spell because you're guaranteed to have the dragon in your hand that you just discovered. Yeah, that's fine. But I just I don't think I like it on turn four, and maybe that's my holdup. Yeah, and any later, it's still just a two. Like I don't like the two, three, for four. And spell damage plus two is great, but with the four mana eaten up, it's hard to map capital. I don't know. I just don't like it that much. Yeah. It might be one of those cards that I come to hate because other people use it better than me. But <laughs> mm. I don't know. You know, what, you know what card I don't like? Malagos. You know what card I like in the new set? The new Malagos. I can see that. Yes. Both of those? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So this is Al- Malagos. Alagos, Malagos, blah, blah, blah. Malagos, Aspect of Magic. He costs five for a 2-8. And his battle cry is, if you're holding a dragon, and he is a dragon, by the way, duh. But if you're holding a dragon, discover an upgraded mage spell. And I'm really list? surprised that it doesn't have the upgraded mage spells listed here. Yeah, I I thought that was interesting. Guess we'll have to wait and find out. I mean, they've shown them. Hang on, let me go. Let me go find them real quick. You go find them real quick. I'm sending Chewie on a fetch quest. I am discovering upgraded, but here we go. All Take right, longer, so can pull this over here. All right, so we've got frostbolt that costs zero. Uh, missiles that do six. Frost nova that costs one. Polymorph that costs one. Uh, the the tome that gives you three random mage spells instead of one. Uh, the arcane explosion that deals two to all enemy minions. Uh, arcane intellect which draws four cards. Fireball that deals eight damage and flame strike that deals eight damage. Cool. So those are the uh, upgraded spells. And you get three of these shown to you. So hopefully one of them will be something that you want. Right? He says discover? Yeah. So they're all either more powerful or cheaper. Yes. Seems good. I like it. Plus he only costs five. Which is really weird for Malagos. <laughs> All right, anything else? Malagos, we good? Yeah, good. Seems fine. Seems like the reason to play dragons and mage, maybe? That and I like it. Yeah. I like it, but I'm a, I'm a fan of, like, get random stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Especially spells. So then we have Rolling Fireball, which is a... So there are a couple of cards in the set that bring back 
importance of positioning, and Rolling Fireball is one of them. Uh, for five mana, deal eight damage to a minion. Any excess damage, so like Trample in Magic, any excess damage continues to the left or right. So I think that's random. Yeah, I so guess unless you start at the end of a row. Unless you start at the end, yeah. So like if you shoot something that has uh, four health, then four damage will roll over to one side or the other. Mm -hmm. And I I think that's a really neat way to do a targeted AoE spell. Look at the flavor text. Why don't they ever run perpendicular? Is this a reference to the fact that in like every movie, when something's coming at you, people never run, you know, <laughs> in another direction? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Especially when something really like tall is falling. Yeah. You can take five <laughs> steps to the left or right and be perfectly safe, but you keep running away from but you're, it. You you spend ten minutes running the um running the same direction that it's falling, like oh, yeah. directly away from it. Yeah. What was that terrible alien mo uh, the alien prequel? Magma got it in the chat. The Prometheus School of Running Away from Things. Prometheus, yes. that's the one. Yeah. yeah. Yep. It's like, hey, you can go either way, but, you know. That one was the worst because they didn't even try to make it look like they were constrained to running in a straight line. They just ran in a straight line. Yeah. Anyway. All right. There. Yeah. So that's Rolling Fireball. It's it's cool. Uh, next up, we have Dragon Caster. This is the reason, I think, to play dragons and mage. This is, this is spicy right here. Yeah. Six mana, four, four. Battle cry, if you're holding a dragon, your next spell costs zero. And the big ones, of course, are Flame Strike, Blizzard, and Puzzle Box. I love me some Puzzle Box. That does not surprise and people me. People started playing Pyroblast again with that on, old person. Oh, that's true. Yeah. In the in the latest um, Tavern Brawl, where it's like you start with ten mana crystals, I made a mage deck that was all about just playing Puzzle Box by any way, shape, or form as soon as possible. It was yeah. awesome. <laughs> it killed me a lot, but it was fun because that's what Puzzle does. Yeah, it is. All right. But yeah, free spells are good. Six mana, four, four kind of sucks. But people were playing the uh, the Tortolan. Yeah. Which casts mm -hmm. a random spell mm -hmm. from your from your deck. Yeah. Yeah, from your deck. Yeah. So this seems... No, wait. Does it random or do you discover it? You discover... You discover a, oh, you a discover spell a spell deck. from your deck and cast you it. Right, it okay. Yeah, and it has random targets, of course. Yeah. That's that... I knew randomness came in somewhere. But yeah, mm -hmm. this... This seems, I I think better. Because you have more control over what you're you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, and then the the big boy, like a a finisher for the mana cyclone decks, the mana giant. It's an eight mana elemental. That's an eight eight, but it costs one less for each card you've played this game that didn't start in your deck. So all the stuff you get from Mana Cyclone, the card you get from Arcane Breath, uh, mm -hmm. the card you get from Violet Spellwing, the card you get from... Wait. Yeah, card. The the dragon you get from the Explorer. The Malagos spell. <laughs> Sometimes the coin. Sometimes the, the coin. coin, yeah. That's right, yeah. Like, all of this makes your Mana Giant cheaper so that you can eventually just go... Bleh, and drop like a one or two or zero man eight eight, and make your opponent go, huh! which I think now, is the goal I, when you're playing an eight eight, right? Yeah. Probably. Now I really do like this, and I love mage, but a little part of me can't help. I, I love the the rogue mechanic of the burglary stuff, and I'm gonna find it hilarious when I'm playing my rogue deck and I get a mana giant. I'm gonna be like, yeah. Because I'm gonna have all this stuff that didn't start out in my deck already, but that's gonna be a really weird time. So we don't have to spend any time with that. Um, giants are pretty good in general, right? Like just eight eights that cost less for various things. Yeah. Warlock handlock is still a thing, right? So it, it will be again. We'll get to that. Yeah. 
That's it for mages. What do you think of mage card? I am super excited to build some mage decks. Yeah, cool stuff to inspire new decks. Yeah, like the 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 side quests and the new cards and the elemental not new cards, the created cards and the elementals and the mana giant all piling into a deck just makes me just makes me happy. I agree. I am down with that. And there's probably enough new and existing mage and neutral dragon stuff that you could even slot some of the dragon things into a um, into a Highlander deck. Oh, almost certainly, yeah. Yeah. Let's see, between the Explorer and Malagos... Oh, well, that's all we got here, isn't it? Explorer, Malagos, and Arcane Breath. Huh. I guess when we get to neutral, we'll have to actually count up how many of the dragons there are worth playing. Mm -hmm. Because you need what? Six, between six and eight? Probably, probably seven or eight to make the, you know, if you're holding a dragon stuff worth it? Yeah, I mean, and there are dragons in other sets too. Oh yeah, that's, that's, oh yeah. (laughs) Not many, because this whole year of the dragon thing has been woefully short on dragons. (laughs) <laughs> Probably because they were waiting to pile them all in at the last minute. <laughs> but, yeah. Plus, then you get to play Reno. Right. All right. I'm digging it. All right, so let's do our last League of Explorers class. The Paladin. Right. So first up, we have Righteous Cause, which is a side quest of summon five minions, and your reward is give your minions plus one plus one. I don't like it. (laughs) Because you know what's going to happen? They're going to get wiped. You're going to summon four minions, and then they're all going to die. And so then you're going to play one, and it's going to get plus one plus one, and you're going to go, great. Yes, yeah, but and I yes, but and I have to say, is that Sir Finley knighting people because everything else is forgiven? If that is Sir Finley knighting people, uh, you know what? <laughs> oh, it says, and I hereby dub thee a cadet of the Explorers League. Next, so he's not really knighting people. Ah, uh, close enough. But I, the, the card's not great. Like you could totally get Sam into the uh, uh, the Explorers League Cadet program, dude. Oh, look it up! I think they have a one eight hundred number. <laughs> That's weird. Um, but yeah, now it could be that this is a good card, and I'm just super uh, unlucky and pessimistic <laughs> about it, but. Like, that was my very first thought, was, wait, what if they all die, and then you finish the quest? That sucks. And I, mean, I can't get they, past that. Even in even if they don't have a removal spell, in this game, unlike, say, Magic or some others, you can attack your opponent's minions, so it's going to be that much harder to keep a significant number of them around if someone sees this coming. So, yeah. 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 Like, it just doesn't. This one doesn't do it for me, personally. Nope. Well, do you like sand? I don't. I don't personally no. like sand. No, <laughs> no. That's all I had to say. <laughs> no, but bad, like, Brian. <laughs> but do you like sand breath? Uh, actually, no, I don't. No. So for one mana, give a minion plus one plus two, which is fine, and give it divine shield if you're holding a dragon. Which is fine. But as far as like dragon rewards, eh? Defined Shield could be pretty powerful. I mean, granted, this is a common card. Okay, that's a good point. But like the others that we've seen thus far are like get a draw card and get a mana crystal or. <laughs> Uh, 
I guess the hunter one is also kind of meh. Yeah, the hunter one is on but, the level of sand breath. For one mana. But the draw card get a mana crystal was rare, so I mean. Oh, but it was. <clears throat> wasn't it? Oh, I don't know. Let's. I haven't. I don't pay attention to rarity in this game. Breath of Dreams is a rare. Oh, uh, look at that. But arcane breath is also rare and costs the same as this, and I just like okay. better. Yeah. So. All right. Well, now that I see rarity is a thing for these. Yeah, Sand Breath gets more of a pass. It just doesn't yeah. excite me, mm -hmm. but it is common compared to the two impressive ones, which are rare. So yeah, yeah. there there are situations where you're gonna be like, yeah, this is pretty good, but mm, it's fine. But like yeah, the problem no, is meant to do a job. the The problem is the, the the dragons in this class lead more towards a control deck. Where I guess the sand, the divine shield is the more important bit. Yeah. But like plus one, plus two, and divine shield in my brain is goes in an aggro deck. <laughs> so. I don't know. I'm just getting mixed signal. I just don't like it. I'm probably just making stuff up because I don't like it. <laughs> Mike seems to like it though. I do. Okay. And Brian, what are your thoughts? Like yes or no? That cinnamon rolls are delicious. I and, agree. And that this is again, it's fine. All right. It, it for one mana, it's fine. If this costed two mana, it would be unplayable. But it doesn't. It costs one. So that is a good point. It's fine. It, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. All I right. love the next card though. Yeah, sanctuary. Sanctuary. The side quest, take no damage for a turn, and the reward is get a 3-6 with taunt. Uh, That seems like a pretty good reward for two mana. Yeah. It does. Now, that first part may be harder. I mean, Hearthstone in general, you, you can get into some very aggressive game, but and Hunter can just shut this down every turn. But the fact is that if you're committing them, if they don't want you to get the reward... And maybe they're hitting you instead of hitting some of your minions or something, and they're making suboptimal plays to keep you from this reward. And that's a net benefit to you in the long run. And then if you get a free three six with taunt for two mana, that's pretty good. And you're not having to commit anything else to the board to do this. Yeah, like if they hit yeah. you in the face instead of trading. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. to keep you from getting a 3-6, that means you still have your minion <laughs> that they mm -hmm. should have killed, and that's freaking awesome. Yeah. The more I think about this card, the more I like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, unlike the other side quests, it does not cost one, because that would be ridiculous. Yeah, Indeed. this should be cost one. It is costed appropriately. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, it's good. All right, what? This doesn't go away after a turn. No, no, no. That just sits there forever, and the first turn where you don't take damage, boom, out pops a 3-6. Now, yeah. the 3-6 can't attack the turn you get it. Because yeah, right. be. I've seen the animation. It looks like it pops out on their turn. But it doesn't. It pops out on your turn, so it still has whatever summoning sickness. That's okay. fine. So it pops out like right before you draw your card. Uh, pretty much, yeah. Mm -hmm. And hey, fan says with a twenty-five month resub, and I got an emote. Yay! Thanks, buddy. Yay. Hey, you know what that means? That means I can do this now, and make a weird shrugging chewy head. <laughs> Anyway, so Sanctuary is cool. Let's move on. Bronze Explorer. He looks so earnest. He he does. Like, he really wants to find a th whatever he's looking for, and he really he just wants to do all he can to help, including uh, being a 2-3 with lifesteal for three mana. And discovering a dragon, because that's what he is. Uh, I love lifesteal minions with... Three toughness. 
because that, that feels like a lot of the time you're actually going to get four uh, health out of this guy. Plus, discover a dragon, you know. Always good. I don't know. He's kind of basic. I like him a lot more than the mage one. I, th I think he's a workhorse. I think he's going to do what you need him to do. And I like this 2-3 a lot better than the other 2-3 because he costs one less. So. Yeah. Mike? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I think... I mean, look at that face. He just wants to help you out. He is, in fact, a good boy. Maybe a good girl. I don't know. I'm not judging. But they are here to help. Yeah. And it's a common. All right. So next up, we have Dragon Rider Talritha. Huh. A three mana, three, three. Good stat line for a legendary. Uh, death Rattle. Give a dragon in your hand, plus three, plus three, and this Death Rattle. This is cool. Yes. Which means, of course, that when that dragon dies, it gives another dragon in your hand, plus three, plus three, and this Death Rattle. Yeah. And like, it goes I... on and on and on. I get, and reading the flavor text, you can't just run away from your problems unless you have another dragon to jump to. It looks like the plus three plus three is actually mm -hmm. represented is... the dragon rider Talritha jumping on that dragon. That's yep. hilarious. Yeah. That's great. And when that one dies, just jump off onto the next one. Mm -hmm. Infinite supply of Yoshis. Yeah. Huh. Now, since this is such a slow mechanic, again, this... This leads me to think that you want this in some sort of uh, control deck. Because mm -hmm. this is just extra value forever, essentially. Yeah. Hmm. I always love Control Paladin. I hope it can work. Because when Control Paladin works, I play a lot of Paladin. <laughs> <laughs> and when Control Paladin doesn't work, I don't play any Paladin. <laughs> Not really into aggro paladin. I'm not really into aggro anything in Hearthstone. I feel you. It's all right. Next up, speaking of aggro cards, the Sky Claw. A three mana one two mech that says battle cry summon two one one microcopters, and it also says your other mechs have plus one attack. So it's not actually a one two and two one ones it's a one two and two two ones although right. it's important to know that it's what we call an anthem effect in magic it's not giving those mechs plus one uh attack permanently if the sky claw goes away they lose the bonus so right i don't know how i feel about this one i think on the surface it looks great because you get a lot of power for three mana but feels very easy to disrupt but i gotta give props to the claw you remember toy story the, the claw. claw but the thing to remember about the sky claw now this would not have occurred to me until i was playing some hearthstone uh this morning yesterday i can't remember and i ran into a paladin deck that went turn one glowstone guy the one three turn two mm. micro mummy and I went, yeah. holy crap, if you play a Skyclaw after that, like you just win, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a lot of punching damage. And so mm. in an aggressive mech deck, which is currently a thing, Skyclaw is killer. But outside of that, Skyclaw is whatever. Yeah. So, hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Plus, it's a sky claw. So it's a crane game, but attached to a drone instead of attached to the underside of a, like a, a thing. Mm -hmm. But it oh is yet... God, it's the trendy game in Link's Awakening. And yet, it's uh, it has yet to earn its doctorate. So I don't get it. Doctor Claw. Isn't oh, that oh, 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 oh. 
I was trying to See, think of words had, like post dot. Yeah, no, wait. What is that? Because what? I had to explain it. It's not. It's not that great. <laughs> no, that's so. how it gets funnier. Okay, next up. Now there is another thing you can do in Paladin in this set that the name I've seen that Mike told me was being thrown around was True Paladin. Okay. Which is a car a deck that is no neutral cards, only Paladin cards. Mm-hmm. So the Light Forged Zealot is the first one. A four mana four two. Battle cry, if your deck has no neutral cards, equip a true silver champion. Which costs four already. Yeah. So it's a it's a true silver champion with a free four two attached. Huh. <laughs> now bombs shut this off. I think that's it uh, though right that's about it yeah i think that's all you can stuff into your opponent's deck right now i don't know that's is hard. there is there another creature that is there a minion right now that can jump in an opponent's deck when it dies like the weasel like the weasel, like the weasel? Like i right i can't remember i don't i don't remember either i haven't played as much as you guys but i don't think so i don't remember seeing one and if there is no one's playing it so because that would Oh, but that wouldn't really work so well against the uh, Singleton decks unless you got more. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I mean, seems relatively safe to commit to this. Yeah. And this is a hell of a payoff. Like, this yeah, isn't yeah. the big flashy one. That's later. But I think this is the better one. Oh, you is think this... so? Do what? You think so? Dude, this don't tempo ever, is nuts. Don't ever yeah. underestimate a true silver champion. Yeah, you get the true silver champion to remove a thing and a body? Huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess there is just too much variability in the other one. Plus, the other one comes down at seven, which is way later when it's possible you're already either way ahead mm -hmm. or way behind. But... This is just super, super solid and well worth not putting neutral cards in your deck, I think. The other one may not get you what you need, but how often do you not need a true silver champion? Exactly. <laughs> For free. I, I can count the number of times that I didn't need a true silver champion. It's every time I was playing not Paladin. And even then I could have used it. <laughs> Oh, and then the Light Forge Zealot is a card-carrying member of the Paladin's only Paladin Club. <laughs> Shut up, flavor text. Okay, then we have Nosdormu the Timeless. I don't know what to think about Nosdormu. Whew, this could backfire, but if it doesn't, wow. So it's an 8-8 eight, eight for 4. It's an 8-8 eight, eight for 4. And the battle cry is set each player to 10 mana crystals. Now, they're empty mana crystals... So if so it's past opponent... turn four, do your other stuff first. Or you might get to keep the mana crystals you've already got. I don't actually know. But I know that they're empty mana crystals. So it's not like, hey, I have ten mana now. Let's keep doing stuff. No, no, no. It's not a big swing turn. <laughs> best 8-8 best eight eight ever. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not uh, Akun the Forgotten King. <laughs> but for four mana. Yeah. That, that would be dumb. Uh, so yeah, I I I don't know. Giving my opponent ten mana first is scary, but then I do have a really cheap eight eight. I don't know. This is one I'm gonna have to to try out because yeah, I like mean, an eight eight on turn four is really good. But I used to play a lot of handlock, and an eight eight on turn four can still just up and die immediately. It when can, your opponent but, doesn't have 10 mana crystals. <laughs> but keep in mind, you see it coming. They may not be situated optimi optimally. And you're going to turn around and have 10 mana your next turn, too? That is also true. So I can't, I come kind of come down on the side of, yeah, I, I can dig this. Yeah, so. the funny thing is is that it's there's a possibility it's going to backfire even more if your opponent kept a hand that wasn't all that great. Yeah. Because their hand might be awesome now. Maybe, but that you're you're basically saying that they may luck out by this, but I maintain that they still may not. While certainly they don't have to have a plan, and all of a sudden they have ten mana, their hand isn't going to get worse. 
what they were planning to do may go out the window. So if they're not sequencing things, may not work out. Yeah. Anyway, more dragons. You can still sequence stuff pretty great with 10 mana. You can. I'm just trying to I'm trying to find a way around that. That's all. Next Lord. Next up we have the Amber Watcher. Wait. Like Amber Heard? Which Amber are we watching? No, it's watching you. Oh, Amber's watching me. Well, hey girl, yes. hey. So it's a five mana four six dragon. Battle cry restore eight health. Again, the dragon stuff leans heavily into a, a control deck because this is antique heal bot, but way, way, way better. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah four six. That's a very good card. Like the With... heal bot was what a five mana three three. Yes, yeah. and couldn't it only heal you? <gasps> oh my god, this does say restore 8 health, not not you gain 8 Whoa, health. Wow. It, I, wow. Oh man. And Did not a see that. <laughs> it's a dragon, so it goes with all the dragon synergy. And it's a common. Yeah, this card is blatantly better than a lot of different things. <laughs> <laughs> does not even apologize for it. <laughs> Job. This card tells your cards to suck it. <laughs> I feel like that should be on a t-shirt. Right? Yeah. I mean, I don't really have a whole lot else to say about it because you read it, you know what it does. Yeah. It's so straightforward, but it's so good. Yeah. <gasps> so, you going to be playing some Paladin, Chewy? I hope so. I really hope it doesn't suck. Oh, and here is... Uh... Here's Urel. Like, that's what I'm going to call her because playing Heroes of the Storm, that's Urel. Look at her. I'm pretty sure Urel even does this pose in uh, Heroes of the Storm for one of her ults. <laughs> but Lightforged Crusader, a 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven epic. I thought this was a legendary. Okay, a 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven epic that says Battle Cry. If your deck has no neutral cards, add 5 random paladin cards to your hand. What? Um, so this is like the big refill when you're playing the true paladin deck mm -hmm. rather than being super duper solid. Like the uh, zealot, the crusader is just, here's more value. Have a party. Yeah. And you might get crap or you might get those Dormu. Like yeah. the, the good one. paladin has some really narrow, really small cards. Yeah. Like, there are a couple so, yeah. secrets you can get that'll make you go, uh. <laughs> so there is a high, yeah, five cards is five cards, but there's a lot of variability here. And or I you might get you don't care for it very much. Or you might get an Amber Watch. <laughs> Which is good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, this one, like I said, I, I think this is a bonus to playing the True Paladin. I don't think it's the reason to play True Paladin. Like, I think that insane turn four of the Zealot is the reason to play True Paladin. The Crusader is just the extra gravy. Mm -hmm. Just the cleanup crew. Yeah. But speaking as a fun card, this is freaking sick. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> anytime awesome. you get r random cards, as Brian keeps saying, you love it. But five of them at once? <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Sign me up. Oh, and that's it for Paladin. So what do we think? So we've I got mean... a Control Dragon Paladin sitting here. You've got the True Paladin cards. Mm -hmm. And then you've got, like, the Aggro Mech cards. Card. I think the Righteous Cause probably goes with that. You're right. It does. Pro probably. I really like Sanctuary. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I like to light for Zealot. Like, nobody tell uh, Massacre Girl from Magic, but... <laughs> uh, I'm not sure that the Dragon Rider will be worth it. Although, if you can get it out early and then put it on an Amber Watcher or something, then... <laughs> I, I, I'm kind of digging the Dragon Rider. I, I 
if I get a copy, I'm definitely, definitely, definitely trying to use that. Yeah. Plus two plus three. If we thought plus two plus two was big, then plus two plus three is by definition bigger. Oh man! So, and then so bad. turn three, you dragon rider. Turn four, you run it into something, and it puts its buff on Nosdormu. Now you have an eleven eleven. Seems pretty good. Uh, yeah, I'd do that. I don't care if it's right or not. <laughs> this isn't huh. even if they killed Norsdamu. You have a plus three, plus three dragon in your hand and all the mana you need to cast it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. So this concludes our first video. For those of you watching later on YouTube uh, of the League of uh, Explorers classes, uh, honestly, I think they're all, they all got good stuff. Mm-hmm. And I'm actually excited to play new stuff in all of these classes. Druid, Hunter, Mage, Paladin? Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah. Now let's do something evil next time. Yeah.